Okay, so welcome to Retech, and today we're going to cover the history of the Sinclair computers. This is part one, and what we're going to do is cover the history of Sinclair computers all the way through from the MK14 right the way through to his last official Sinclair research model in its original form, which is the QL, and then through to the Amstrad era and hopefully a little beyond into his Cambridge computers era. Now, Sinclair Computers was a British company that brought out computers that were affordable for the masses. He was kind of the UK's version of Jack Trammell and Commodore. Basically, he would bring out computers for the masses and Jack Trammell's slogan was for the masses not the classes and um, this was the same kind of insight that Clive Sinclair had from a very early stage and that was all the way back through his Sinclair radionics days. The two major computers in sort of UK history really are the MK14 and the Sinclair ZX80. They were the early pioneers. You had an MK14 which was very similar in concept to the Kim 1. It wasn't the most powerful machine. It wasn't the most fully featured machine but it was the only machine you could get for less than a hundred pounds. That enabled people who had a passing interest in computer technology to go out and buy one. It enabled them to experiment and try out this newfangled computing thing. And that was without them having to shell out four, five, six, seven, eight, nine hundred, in some cases over a thousand pounds. And then to find out it really wasn't for them. Clive knew that this was a market that needed to be tapped. And he knew that if he could, he would generate a lot of sales. And that's exactly what happened. The MK14 was £39 or less. The pricing was the key. The computer was almost secondary to that philosophy, but it worked. And that's what we're going to look at. We're going to have a look at the first part, which is covering the MK14. So let's have a look. So we're going to start our journey with the original Cambridge computer, which is the Science of Cambridge MK14. It's a basic microprocessing system. It's a kit to make your own computer at home. Whatever for. And it was produced in 1978. This was long before the ZX80 and even before Sinclair was Sinclair Research and it was a low cost computer kit. The MK14 was very similar in kind of concept to the MOS Kim 1 and also a number of other kits launched in the late 1970s. But instead of going with a 6502 or Z80, Clive Sinclair and Chris Curry decided to go with the National Semiconductor SCMP INS 8060 and it's an 8-bit CPU that never really became popular. It found its way into sort of niche embedded systems of the era but that was really about it. Now the MK14 wasn't massively powerful. It had 256 bytes of RAM and it was expandable to 2170 bytes or 2170 bytes. Input was a 20 key keypad, very much in the vein of his later machines, the ZX80 and 81. And the output was kind of via an LED 7 segment display. And the keypad wasn't really that much to write home about. It was sort of just like a calculator of the day. I mean, it was possible to output basic text and graphics with this little machine to a VDU. The architecture itself was more of a hobbyist machine, allowing easy access to the board itself. So peripherals such as cassette interfaces and even a 
sound interface was actually designed or planned for this and the cassette interface was produced but even four decades ago or more now the MK14 was very very basic but it was cheap it was equivalent to about £240 today or £38 in 1978 money and it was much cheaper than anything available on the market I mean Science of Cambridge went on to sell in the range from 15 to 50,000 items so it was very popular and it was kind of a launch pad for Christopher Curry who went on to found or become one of the founders of Acorn Computers but the problem with today is despite kind of selling thousands and thousands of these machines you'd be very very lucky to find one in working condition they are pretty rare now to find over 40 years later okay so I hope you enjoyed part one of the history of Sinclair computers and I hope you subscribe and I'll see you again soon so thank you